Well, you know, the mission of our Parkinson's disease research at Mayo Clinic is to develop methods to predict, prevent, and halt Parkinson's disease. And the research study that has been published uh, is a major breakthrough uh, or a major step in that direction. Um, specifically, we've developed a method at Mayo Clinic to treat Parkinson's disease, and we believe that um, applying this method ultimately to patients may uh, be effective in slowing the progression of their disease or even halting it. Uh, and basically what it relates to is this. Uh, we and others discovered that too much of a protein in the brain called alpha-synuclein is a sufficient cause for Parkinson's disease in some rare families due to gene mutations that lead to making too much protein. We then subsequently determined with our collaborators from all over the world that there are common variations in genes that also lead to too much of this protein, alpha-synuclein, being made. And so the light bulb went, went off and we said, well, maybe if we developed a treatment to reduce the production of this protein, alpha-synuclein, to turn off the gene, we could actually prevent people from getting Parkinson's disease or slow or halt the progression of the disease after they develop symptoms. Well, Parkinson's disease is a very common illness. It's uh, estimated to affect about a million Americans presently and millions of people worldwide. Uh, and every one of us is born with about a 2% risk of developing Parkinson's disease during our lifetime. Uh, it costs society billions of dollars. It's very disabling. There's a seven times greater likelihood of going into a nursing home if you develop Parkinson's disease. Uh, you're twice as likely to die uh, over a period of time as people without Parkinson's disease, so it's a big deal. Uh, the symptoms uh, are shaking, what we call tremor, uh, slowness of movement, what we call bradykinesia, and stiffness of the limbs, what we call rigidity. And later in the course of illness, patients can become unsteady and falling can become a major problem and also unfortunately uh, a, a third to uh, almost a half of patients with Parkinson's disease will develop dementia which is a disabling um, decline in their mental faculties. Uh, and what we in effect have done is collaborated with a company called Elnylam Pharmaceuticals and they are leaders in a technology that's called RNA interference. Uh, this is basically a way of killing the messenger uh, remember from your high school biology that we have genes. They're like the blueprints that tell our bodies how to make proteins. Proteins are the building blocks of life. Uh, and then that gene is transcribed as a message by RNA. And then that RNA message gets translated into a protein. Uh, and so what we basically do is we kill the messenger. Uh, we uh, silence the genes by identifying the RNA message that would normally lead to the production of the alpha-synuclein protein and using these special RNA molecules called small interfering RNAs, we can in effect chop up this uh, molecular message so that the protein doesn't get made. And so we can in effect reduce the amount of protein that's being made uh, by uh, about 80 uh, percent and that could be enough to keep Parkinson's disease from progressing. The paper that we've just presented and uh, that's just been accepted uh, details the first four years of work which is basically developing a small molecule inhibitor uh, of alpha-synuclein which prevents its, uh, its production and, uh, in, the, in the first place. And This has been very successfully applied to mice and, uh, and basically we can lower endogenous synuclein expression in mice uh, by about 70-80 percent. The brain has two hemispheres, left and right, okay, and this is just a normal mouse. And what you see here in grey, the darker grey, is the message to the alpha-synuclein gene, the endogenous message to the alpha-synuclein gene. It's very high, highly expressed in some brain regions, the dentate gyrus, for instance, um, and in the cortex, and not expressed in other regions, it's very low expressed. Um, this is a mouse that's been treated on the right-hand side, this side, with the small molecule that uh, inhibits um, alpha-synuclein uh, translation. It's been treated with the RNAi molecule to alpha-synuclein. And you can see on this side of the brain it's almost completely void of message. The brain is still intact. The cells are all still there. The, the animal is perfectly healthy, running around, completely normal. 
But what you see here is this is message to mouse alpha-synuclein, and it's completely ablated in this whole region. Um, and that's what basically we've achieved to do. We managed to silence it. See this, this kind of like um, wishbone sort of? Uh, this is the end of that wishbone right here. And in the cells, this is the treated side of the brain. You can see that there's no brown pigment anymore. The pigment is actually to alpha-synuclein protein. It disappeared. That's because it's been silenced, we switched it off. This is the other side of the brain, which is untreated by comparison. And you can see that there, there's plenty of brown pigment here that's not turned off. Well, you know, there are very significant uh, uh, hurdles, uh, potentially, to this therapy. We need to be honest about that. Um, right now, we've developed uh, compounds that are very uh, effective in animal models, uh, but they need to be directly delivered to the brain. Um, we can't give these therapies by mouth or even by injection in vain. So we're going to have to directly infuse or directly administer uh, th this medicine to the brain uh, via a tiny uh, cannula, for example, uh, and that will have to uh, be delivered then via a, some type of a pump device that will continuously deliver uh, this treatment to targeted areas of the brain. So it's going to involve neurosurgery and it's going to involve some type of a device to continuously deliver or to intermittently deliver uh, this uh, uh, chemical compound or treatment. Uh, now of course as a clinician before I decide that any of my patients should have a brain operation I have to be pretty convinced that the therapy is uh, potentially effective and safe. Uh, and, um, you know, we have to um, be able to accept the possibility that we're going to do the surgery uh, and um, it's not going to be, the treatment isn't going to be effective. So we have to have something to offer the patients as a, um, uh, as a fallback. And so what I envision is that we're going to deliver, an ex in fact, we've, we've developed the devices, what I envision is that we're going to deliver these therapies surgically through devices that can otherwise be used to administer FDA approved deep brain stimulation therapy. So we can on the one hand deliver, uh, insert a device that will stimulate the brain and reduce Parkinson's symptoms and through that same FDA approved device deliver an experimental compound that might also prevent the disease from progressing. So that would be an effective cure because we get rid of existing symptoms and we prevent the disease from progressing further.